general manager of Lonely Lands Agency. We're based all over the place really, but predominantly in Melbourne. Um, I live in Torquay, which is just an hour out of Melbourne. We've got staff in, in, the, in Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sydney, um, all over the place. And we are a live booking agency and represent artists like Tones and I, Tash Sultana, Ocean Alley, Ziggy Albert. It's a very diverse roster. Uh, and yeah, um, well, it first started when I was about 18 years old. My cousin was working on a show called Rove Live, which was like the Jimmy Fallon in Australia in the early 2000s, which was really popular back then. And I always wanted to work in music and they just sent me off to the green room to serve beers to, to guests. And I became a friend with one person from Universal and I just begged her to be an intern for pretty much two years straight. You know, I'd hit her up once a month, every month for two years. And eventually I got an internship where I worked for free there for a couple of years and just really worked my backside off and through that became and through networking came other opportunities where a, a new booking agency was opening a shop and I always was fascinated in live touring and it's just where I wanted to be but I absolutely had no idea about anything I didn't know what backline was I didn't know what half the venues were but I just dived in and just learn as much as I could and I built a lot of artists from you know 100 cat rooms to 2000 theatres to beyond that as well and then you know, I worked at this agency for a good five years. And then after that, you know, I had the opportunity when working with Tash and our directors, Jadon and Regan from Unified Music Group and Lemon Tree Music. They wanted to have like an agency, you know, artist run, um, artist first kind of ethos. And, you know, I wanted to change. And that's how that kind of came about. But yeah, a lot of work, a lot of mistakes, a lot of learning. But yeah, that's kind of how the journey began. Well, it varies really much from day to day, but first and foremost, all I want to do is ensure that our staff are supported in any avenue possible. You know, like we've got other agents who have, you know, Des and Jaria who work for us and all I do is help support them, push them where I can. And if they want my help, that's great. If not, and then also our support staff under them as well, which is our tour coordinators and our tour coordinators, like even though that they're technically admin staff you know they are the engine of our agency without them the spine fall falls over <laughs> to be honest whether it's like contracts invoicing worksheets all of that kind of stuff like they are the machine yes the agents are the face of it but i want to ensure that they're supported and i can assist them to make their job as easy as much as possible as well and obviously working as an agent working with established artists looking for new artists developing strategies um routing tours promoting tours you know what's going to be more beneficial from the artist what's what are the right rooms what's the right strategy you know and it varies from person to personal it's really funny like every artist is always case by case what's going to work for a pop star is not going to necessarily work for a punk act as well but one thing that Lonely Lands always has had and has been driven and a lot of the core of our artists, especially our established artists, have very much have had a DIY ethos and really have done it themselves for a long, long time, booked their own shows, haven't really used promoters, slogging it out, gigging really hard, doing the, you know, doing the time and doing the hard yards. That has really been a common theme across all acts, but at the same time, it really varies of what that specific artist goal and what their objective is and how we can tailor to that if they want to play x festival or they want to play y room or they want to you know support this artist you know it really comes down to the individual and how we can tailor and support them and what they want really but obviously we can you know provide advice whether you know and utilize their strengths whether it's from streaming or is it from live ticket numbers or whether it's you know charting stats or whatever or you know help utilize their strengths to get to their those goals but yeah it really comes down to the individual what they want to do i use the motto that you've got to make something out of nothing and you can't think anything's going to happen happen on a silver platter and you just wait you've got to go out there and be proactive and not reactive with all your artists so that's pretty much getting on the phone it's you know keeping communication constant with 
anyone, whether it's a venue, whether it's a promoter, whether it's a festival, whether it is an external party or, you know, whether it's a digital marketing team or whatever it is, like we've all got the same goal, but communication is absolutely the key. And you just can't sit on your chair and wait for the phone to be answered. You really need to be proactive in this job. If not, you're not doing service to your artists, really. <laughs> That's a really interesting question, but I feel in more recent times, for me, it's been word of mouth. If someone reputable puts an artist to me, I will listen, like I'll really listen to, whether it's a, you know, a manager or a promoter or you know someone within the industry that I respect for and really value their opinion I will really take it on and really listen to them obviously there's other avenues like TikTok and you know Spotify playlisting and all of that kind of stuff as well it's interesting we used to focus specifically on you know Triple J a lot but that's not really a huge cog in the wheel anymore so we really have to be diverse but for me word of mouth is the main one but like if someone's going to cold email me I won't necessarily dive into it too deep to be honest because it's not really a priority but I appreciate the hustle no matter what you would say TikTok is a, obviously a huge trend for a lot of artists at the moment but I find TikTok really hard to navigate you could have two million followers on TikTok but it doesn't mean you can sell out a tour or it doesn't mean you can put on a show because like the issue is that there's so much content out of there it's really hard for people to latch on to something like pre-streaming you know you only had so many avenues of listening to music now there's just everything so it is difficult to navigate but the things that excite me are bands that are willing you know touring a lot just throwing everything at it putting on an exciting live show you know jumping around being charismatic being engaging and talking with their audience having that personal touch to fans and feel like you're on their journey with them like that stuff like the, the basic simple stuff that hasn't really changed from the get-go but bands that are still doing it and not trying to be something that they're not that really excites me well it's really funny that you say that because let's just say like two or three of our artists that we look after have gone viral online from relative different platforms, to be honest. Like, Tones went viral on Spotify. Tash Sultana went viral on YouTube. Artists have gone viral on Instagram, TikTok, or whatever it may be. It is hit and miss, but some of our biggest artists have broken through their career from this. And might I add, a lot of these artists have been pre-COVID, not so much post-COVID as well. So... I feel it might be a little bit different, but content is key. Making sure that they're staying relevant, that's all. Because when, you, when you're out of the picture, people just move on straight away. I think it's really easy to get lost in the music scene with that party element, I, I suppose. And I think if you really want to take this industry seriously, you need to look at this as a job, not a party. You know, like you've got a responsibility and you've got a job to do. There's nothing wrong you're having a bit of fun, but at the end of the day, it's someone's livelihood and someone's, you know, someone's baby as well, you can say. And you've got to be absolutely professional and, you know, you need to be 100% on all the time. In terms of advice that I would give to someone wanting to be a booking agent, like it's not for everyone because it's a lot of hustle and bustle and you're going to have acts that do well. You're going to have acts that you put a lot of time in and you don't. Your heart's going to get broken as well. Artists come and go, but you've got to be resilient. And if you're not resilient, <laughs> and that's one thing COVID learned as well, like you have to be resilient. No matter what anything that gets thrown at you, you just put your head down and just buckle on. It's like running a marathon and you just keep going, going and going. And if you stay resilient, you will, and you are hungry in what you want to achieve, you'll get there. And look, I knew nothing about being an agent, you know. I've come from a background where I'm dyslexic and it's, you know, literature and stuff is hard, but you find ways of just keep going, going and going. And if you keep your mind on it, nothing is impossible and just never give up and just no matter what anyone says just keep powering through and if you're passionate enough you'll find a way and you'll be happy and you'll get through it might take time but if time's on your side then just keep at it <laughs>
So there's an app that I use called Surfline because I live in Torquay, which is right near like Bells Beach and that. And I love look, going and surfing and that's why I'm doing my surf. I'm, I'm probably on that the most, looking at the surf. <laughs> Everyone says it comes down to songs, which is one thing, but for this question, it's going to be work ethic. If you're not going to do the work or put any effort into what you're doing or take any pride of what you're doing, you're not going to break yourself. You can be the most talented person in the world. And I've worked with artists that are extremely talented, but just didn't have the work ethic. And it's quite sad and disappointing. My favorite concert would actually be a really small one and just out of Melbourne. It's called Nears on the Hill and it's the only festival that I've really been to that I've gone as a fan, not for work. And it's a 2000 capacity venue. There's really great upcoming bands that play there. And, you know, like acts like Vance Joy have played it. Uh, Tash Sultana has played it. Tone's played on the small stage. Um, Ocean Alley of ours has played it. Like it's a great platform for artists to break into doing amazing things. And you see these amazing artists and you're like, whoa, I saw them at this small festival and they're doing incredible things. But the best part about it, it's over New Year's and they stop music at sunset and you just everyone just sits on the hay, hay bale and you watch the sunset go over like these hills into the ocean and then you go back and then enjoy live music again. And it's just really friendly and really amazing. And yeah, that festival is really close to my heart. Look, this is like a chicken and the egg kind of question, but I'm going to say voice. <laughs> I'm going to say voice. Yeah, we get artist writers all the time and a lot of them are really unrealistic and it's hilarious. So every single artist, they'll want something silly. But um, the weirdest one is that they want a $100 Bunnings voucher. And I'm like, what do you want a Bunnings voucher for? So like Bunnings is like a hardware store. So like, you know, where you buy screws, you buy wood, you buy a wheelbarrow. I'm like, why do you want a Bunnings voucher? I don't understand. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I absolutely adore and love Gig Life Pro. Sarah Guppy, Priya of beautiful humans and the community that they've provided, you know, for good like-minded people is just incredible. And, you know, Lonely Lands is here. Like we want to be a part of that community and anything that you need, please don't hesitate. You know, our doors always open, you know, like I said, there's, <laughs> with silly writers, there's nothing ever wrong asking the question ever. And we're always happy to answer any calls, any emails or anything like anyone from Gig Life Pro will always will respond to you. And, you know, we want to collaborate with like-minded people and, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure. And yeah, thanks for including us in part of the family. Don't leave me high and dry.